What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be ranking from worst to best every single figure which has so far been released as part of the Transformers Rise of the Beasts movie line. Now this list includes everything from Deluxe to Voyagers, so I'll be completely excluding any of the gimmicky kind of Beast Alliance figures as to me, you know, they're not very collector orientated and can I just say how awesome it is to finally get a proper full-blown Transformers movie line back on the shelves. You know, after we were kind of done with Age of Extinction the last night and even even Dark of the Moon, I thought the glory days of going into a shop, seeing a massive Transformers display was over, but it's so sick to see it finally make its grand return here for Transformers Rise of the Beasts, and I'm super glad for it, because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I think some of the picks that we've got on this list may just be some of the best movie line figures which have been released since the original 2007 movie. So, with all that being said, we're going to kickstart things off, unfortunately on a low note, because we are going to be starting from worst to best, and as you guys all know, I've got to give this spot to Bumble be what a massive missed opportunity i mean hasbro have been creating live action bumblebee figures since the original 2007 movie and i'm gonna be real with you i think this may just be one of the worst they have ever made i mean the figure is kind of a cool concept on paper but you know in actual reality it just sucks and it's unfortunate that it does suffer from one major design flaw because the second you want to post this figure around Bang! The entire upper chest just wants to kind of auto transform into its vehicle mode and it just makes for an incredibly frustrating experience, you know, for some strange reason. They also packed in these kind of hefty indented joints into the knees, which are just way too tight for a deluxe class figure. And, you know, I do kind of like the weapons in the sense that the roll cage does become a shield and the front bumper splits into a pair of daggers. And it's also quite a cool concept for the vehicle mode because you can have the option between the off-road Camaro or the regular look, but even the vehicle mode is incredibly flawed. I mean, like I said previously, we've seen Camaro live action Bumblebee figures for the past what 16 17 years now and it's got to be one of the worst because it has the bot mode feet just clearly hanging out of the back so yeah overall such a bummer that this figure turned out to be the worst especially as Bumblebee is undoubtedly one of the most popular characters and I guess the only way I can round this segment off would be to just stick with the studio series Rise of the Beast Bumblebee as in my opinion it's the best we've ever seen from the studio series line. Following closely in Bumblebee's steps, I had to give this spot to Mirage. Now, gonna be honest with you, had I not seen the movie, this figure probably would have been slightly higher up on the list, but he was an absolute banger in the film. You know, hands down, one of my favorite live action Autobots to date. It does just kind of suck that pretty much all of his figures, whether it be from the gimmicky line, even the studio series, appear to be severely inaccurate to how he'll actually be in the movie, and all of them seem to be incredibly kibble-tastic. I mean, this figure has primarily the majority of the vehicle mode just slapped on his back, it really does throw me back to the old Age of Extinction shell former days. So yeah, just such a shame. And not to mention the head sculpt sadly is incredibly inaccurate. Now I guess that's not entirely the design department's fault as this movie was postponed by a year. So I imagine the actual studio themselves probably changed up the design between that time. The transformation isn't terrible, but unfortunately is a little cringeworthy due to that whole backpack primarily being made out of transparent plastic. And then when you get stuck into the vehicle mode, it is unfortunately unlicensed. Now that will be a running theme that you guys will see throughout this range video in the sense that pretty much all of the deluxe figures are unlicensed besides Bumblebee but you know the Porsche in the movie caused for some of the most badass action sequences I think we've ever seen in a Transformers live action film you know when we're first introduced to Mirage I absolutely loved that scene where he uses holographic abilities it was just insane so yeah it's kind of a shame to see the mainline version kind of be given a Disney-fied looking vehicle because it does just look like something ripped directly out of a cartoon movie but you know what this may indeed be the superior version when in comparison to the studio series release because not even that figure especially in robot mode I think has unfortunately turned out too great and then a figure which originally was going to take the second to last spot is Terracon Nightbird. Our only baddie on this list is unfortunately Hasbro never gave us a mainline version of Battle Trap or Scourge. But much like Mirage, had I not seen the movie, this is probably a figure which would have worked its way slightly higher up the list. But as a standalone release, it's pretty fun, pretty cool to look at. But when you compare it to the actual CGI design as seen in the movie, it's pretty way off. I mean, in the film, she's kind of this very sick looking gunmetal metallic silver. She's got a lot of purple highlights and not to mention she's a Terracon which has the ability to fly this figure has no wings whatsoever so yeah she's just very inaccurate and if you've checked out the movie for yourselves she's very ninja like to match her G1 counterpart this figure is a little clunky in some aspects especially where the kibble and kind of the hips are which does definitely limit some of the poses you can get out of it and in terms of the vehicle mode it was so badass to actually see a skyline rolling out into battle alongside the Terracons against the Autobots in the movie and this vehicle much like Mirage unfortunately is unlicensed 
lessons. Now, this may be an area where the Inevitable Studio Series version does a slightly better job with, but I thought it was just something worth mentioning. I will say, however, that she has probably one of the coolest forms of weapon storage I have ever seen on a Transformers figure. You know, the way they were able to take her arm blade and the sword, combine it to form the spoiler, whilst it doesn't look 100% perfect, is definitely better than nothing. So, yeah, I guess I've got to give credit where it's due, but if you haven't as of yet picked up that movie line version, they definitely hold out for this Studio Series release, as I am hoping that it will be superior in pretty much every single way. Now, with those bottom three kind of out of the way, this is where we're going to get stuck into some pretty cool figures, and we're going to kickstart things off with a Beast Wars character, one of the coolest additions to the live-action movies, and we've got to kickstart this segment off with Cheetor. Now, this as a standalone deluxe figure, I'm going to be honest with you, I think is fantastic. You know, in my personal opinion, way nicer when in comparison to the Kingdom release that we saw released a few years ago, but after checking the movie out, there is pretty much nothing about this figure which is accurate to the film, and if you're solely after movie accuracy, then definitely pick up the studio series version because he doesn't have a Beast Wars inspired design in bot mode and to tell the truth we don't really see him that much in robot mode as it is so I am kind of interested to see what concepts the design teams were originally handed in regards to these Beast Wars characters as these movie line releases have a very kind of Beast Wars inspired design whereas in the film for the most part they are pretty drastically different but I really like this figure finally includes the gut gun that was one of the biggest issues that I had with the original Kingdom release. The tail whip is still as lazy as ever but I guess it's a decent inclusion Transformation is more or less the Kingdom version on steroids, and it does result in a pretty badass looking cheetah mode. So if you are after a slightly more mechanized version, a little more detailed version of a Beast Wars cheetah, which is more enjoyable than the Kingdom release in my opinion, then yeah, it's a pretty decent figure to pick up. But if you're solely after movie accuracy, then yeah, primarily stick to the Studio Series release. Which, talking of, the next pick, kind of coming in at the halfway point, this had to be given to Rhinox. Now, Rhinox has seen so much love throughout the movie line. I mean, he's pretty much been released in every single scale class. There's been a Battle Changer, there's been a Smash Changer, there's been a Voyager for both movie line and studio series. So, yeah, you know, you would think that he would be an incredibly popular character in the movie. Unfortunately, he's there for roughly three seconds, which is more of an issue with the movie itself than the figures. But, yeah, I did just think that kind of sucked. But, anyway, getting back to this figure, much like Cheetor, a pretty pretty solid standalone version of Rhinox. There I'd say it's even better than the Kingdom release, especially in the way it transforms and its whole enjoyability factor. But after recently reviewing the Studio Series version, gotta be real with you guys, it does pale in comparison in terms of accuracy. I mean, he doesn't really look like this in the movie. The color scheme is completely off, which is something that can be said for most of these movie line figures. I mean, Nightbird was using a lot of brown plastic. Cheetor has brown legs. Rhinox is completely cast in it. So I'm not sure why they wanted to kind of stray away from a gunmetal color. But anyway, you know, in terms of the bot mode, it's decently poseable. It does have a lot of junk in the trunk, especially where the back is and the legs, but in terms of transformation, way nicer when in comparison to the Kingdom release. And the Rhino mode looks decent from the front, but the second you turn that bad boy to the side, bang! He has one of the flattest asses that I think I've ever seen on a Beast Wars Transformer. So, yeah, again, much like Cheetle, if you're solely after movie accuracy, then I would just recommend to primarily stick with the Studio Series release. Now is where we're going to get stuck into kind of the final four, and this was such a tricky part of the list to compile because, to be honest with you, I think these final four are all amazing, but I had to give this spot to Maximal Air Razor. Now, going to be honest with you guys, neither of the Air Razor figures released for the movie, whether it be from Studio Series or the movie line, are accurate. So this is definitely a case where we are going to need a version 3.0 of her in the future, but between those two releases, I am kind of conflicted as to which one overall I prefer because the movie line version surprisingly has originality on its side. You know, whereas the movie line Cheetor and Rhinox kind of borrowed a few pieces of the engineering from their Kingdom counterparts, the movie line Air Razor is a complete brand new transformation, and I think it's genius how the actual robot mode legs convert into the beast wings. You know, it helps to keep the robot mode kibble to a minimal, and it's just such a fun transformation sequence to kind of go through. And in terms of beast mode, incredibly detailed. You know, it's a proper full-blown out mechanized Falcon, and it does look sick. But to go back to my previous point, neither the robot mode or the beast mode are actually it's how she appears in the movie so I do think this is going to be a figure which ultimately does just come down to personal preference whether you like the design of the studio series version more or the design of the movie line version I think for me I kind of prefer the movie line version especially in the beast mode a little better but yeah awesome figure definitely one to pick up if you only want to get one maximal from this movie line 
And now it's down to the final three. And this is going to be such a controversial pick. But I'm giving spot number three to Will Jack. Now, despite his incredibly controversial design in the sense that it is such a departure from how we left him in the Bumblebee movie, this figure is surprisingly incredibly accurate to how he appears in the film, which I was super surprised to see. When he appeared in the movie, I was like, wow, that mainline version is actually pretty spot on, despite being probably in development for the past couple of years. So they didn't really tweak the design of Will Jack too much, which is awesome. And it does make me super anticipated to see as to what the upcoming studio series version is going to offer because the movie line version was so banging but in terms of this figure solid robot mode great articulation you know the way it's put together as well is very awesome transformation really does throw me back to some of the old revenge of the fallen days and when we get stuck into the volkswagen van mode again it is an unlicensed vehicle but as i've said previously that does seem to be kind of the running theme of some of these movie line deluxes you know what i think it's close enough to what we see in the movie besides the kind of rectangular headlights it's near enough spot on and it is just a fun cute little Volkswagen van and I'm so glad to actually get a version of that kind of alt mode into the collection because I don't think we've ever seen a Volkswagen van transformer before. Now we're going to discuss the second spot. Now this was so hard to determine as both of these picks are pretty badass but ultimately taking the runner up spot I had to give it to the leader of the Autobots Optimus Prime. This is actually a really fun Voyager figure. Now undoubtedly the upcoming Studio Series release overall I will say will probably be more accurate in terms of bot mode but in terms of enjoyability I'm not too sure you know I don't own that figure at the moment but the movie line version I'd say is probably one of the most enjoyable Voyager Optimus figures which we've seen released in an incredibly long time and much like Will Jack is surprisingly very accurate to how he appears in the movie you know banging articulation really poseable he even has kind of a fake ab crunch which is super awesome in kind of getting him in that classic G1 Optimus Prime pose transformation a complete breath of fresh air when in comparison to the studio series Bumblebee movie release because that is quite a complex figure whereas this one is pretty straightforward you know you can flip back and forth from robot to vehicle mode in a couple of minutes you know maybe even under a minute if you're kind of skilled and then bang the truck mode as well I think is pretty solid you know in some areas may be even better looking than the Studio Series version because the whole back of the bed does clean up a lot nicer. My only issue with it in truck mode would be the ball bar is sculpted into the figure so it doesn't really look like it's a separate piece and that is an area where I do think the Studio Series version is a little better in and in terms of scale it is slightly smaller when in comparison to both the Studio Series and the Legacy Voyager so that is a little bit of a shame to see but besides that very enjoyable Voyager if you're not too fussed about accuracy or scaling just as a standalone Prime figure it is definitely one of the best ones I think have been released so far. Which leaves only one. Taking the number one spot for the Transformers Rise of the Beast movie line ranking has to be given to the man, the leader of the Maximals, Optimus Primal. Not only was this character basically a 10 out of 10 character in the movie, but the figure is so accurate to how he actually appears in the film. I was very surprised. It was a very similar case with Will Jack. You know, I was expecting there to be quite a few inaccuracies, but for the most part, both robot and beast mode are pretty smack on. I mean, there may be a few inaccuracies here or there, which undoubtedly I think the Studio Series version or even the upcoming Takara Ultimate Optimus Primal will improve upon but just as a Voyager Optimus Primal this guy is banging you know great attention to detail in the robot mode it kind of looks like he's wearing a swap vest which you know just gives you the impression that this Primal can definitely take quite a few hits and kicks and slashes from the Terracons you know he does quite literally look like a unit in terms of a Maximal Warrior the articulation is decent due to the beast mode being quite big and broad there are a few limitations in the poses that you can get out of it but for the most part absolutely incredible and in terms of the transformation, much like Optimus Prime, super straightforward, super simplistic. You know, you can quite literally flip back from beast to robot mode in, I'd say, under 30 seconds if you were to do it really quickly. And bang, the beast mode is just as accurate as the robot mode and surprisingly is not a brick. You know, nine times out of 10 with animalistic alt modes, they're kind of restricted in the way they can articulate. But this beast mode primal, absolutely not. You know, you can pose the arms around, even the back legs and the head is actually on a ball joint. So yeah, amazing figure, super excited to see as to what they're going to come up with in terms of a studio series leader as the Voyager is a pretty solid little release and that pretty much wraps up my entire ranking video for the Transformers Rise of the Beast movie line. I was kind of hoping that Hasbro were going to drop a surprise wave 3 because it would have been sick to have seen another version of a Voyager class battle trap and then a Voyager class scourge would have been insane and don't even get me started on an actual deluxe class RC that would have been terrific but unfortunately you know it's been quite some time since they revealed wave 2 I do just kind of think it's going to be a two wave 
Raven Dunn type of situation, but we've definitely got some fun figures. I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of this video? Whereabouts would you rank some of these characters? Do you think I've been a little harsh to some, or do you think I've been a little too positive in some areas? Let me know your thoughts down below, and until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.